Well, hello, welcome to every single one of you that are tuning in to X Church at Home, wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're in your living room, you're in your dining room, you're in your bedroom, it doesn't matter. I'm excited that you're here, and I just want to welcome you, whether you just jumped on this broadcast, maybe you saw a live pop up on a video feed for YouTube or for Facebook, and you just happened to come upon this broadcast, I just want to welcome you. I'm glad that you're here and you're joining us. I don't believe it's an accident that you found this video at this time. And so I want to just say we're excited that you're here joining us, and if you're new, Maybe you've been just coming for maybe the past couple of weeks to tune in online. Maybe since all of this happened with this pandemic and everything, that it's just caused you to kind of say, maybe I need some kind of hope, or maybe you're kind of going back to your roots. Can I just say, uh, I want to welcome you. I'm glad that you're here, and I believe you came to the right place today. I, I, I believe that you came to the right place where you can be encouraged, where you can be inspired. Because here's what I know to be true about right now, and that is that we are living in some really unsettling times. Right now, I think all of us would agree the uncertainty of what's going on in this pandemic has many people so worried, full of anxiety, full of fear. It, it feels like it's a really shaky time in our lives right now. And I just want to say that I understand. I think we all are feeling that way. And it feels like we're kind of going through a, a very turbulent time in human history. Can I say that I believe one day we're going to look back on this, and this is going to be one of those things that is going to alter history. This is one of those society-changing, culture-shifting moments that we are living in right now. And it is unsettling. It's turbulent. And here's what you find out when you hit turbulence. You find out that you're not in control. I don't know if you've ever been through a situation where you were on a plane and it got really turbulent, but I have. I've been on that many times. I've been in a situation like that. I remember one particular time, my brother at the time was a pilot who was flying around cargo in, in these small twin turbo prop planes. Yes, propellers. Maybe you've never been in a plane with propellers, but these were small, and he would fly around cargo at night. And this was many, many years ago. And when he didn't have a co-pilot with him, he would call me up on the phone, and he would say, hey, I don't have anybody flying with me. How would you like to go with me and fly one of the legs of this flight? He would fly to Detroit. He'd fly to Pittsburgh. He'd fly to Indianapolis, these different flights regionally. And so he called me up, and I would say yes, and, and I would fly with him. It would be so awesome. I don't even know if it was legal. Definitely can't do it now, but I'd go to the airport, and he'd let me in this gate, and I'd get to sit in the, the co-pilot seat and wear a headset. It was the coolest thing ever, and we're flying in this small little prop plane in the middle of the night. And I remember the first time I went with him, we flew to Pittsburgh and he was like, do you want to do a barrel roll? I'm like, this thing can do a barrel roll? He was like, yeah. I was like, do ducks want to fly? Ducks want to swim? Yeah, yeah, I want to do it. And so we had a plane and we're doing barrel rolls. It was the most incredible thing ever. In fact, he would let me fly the plane. Yes, he let me fly. It was the coolest thing ever. But one night he calls me up and he says, do you want to fly with me to Detroit and back? I'm like, yeah, man, I want to do that. He lets me, can I take off? Can I land? Can I do any of that? He'd let me do stuff, you know. And so we take off and it's, it starts off and it's a, it's a clear night. Everything's great. And we are on our way to Detroit. I remember this so vividly. When all of a sudden we fly into a massive storm. This was such a huge storm that, that we could not even get out of it. Like they would tell us, hey, you need to go to this altitude to try to get above it or around it. And I remember being in this small plane, propellers, remember, and, and lightning is ripping across the sky, lights the whole thing up, and, and there's rain is pelting us. We're flying a couple hundred miles an hour, and rain, it sounds like hail, is just slamming the plane. I asked my brother, I said, does lightning ever hit airplanes? He was like, oh yeah, all the time. I'm like, what do you mean, all the time? But, but, he, but we're sitting in this little plane and the turbulence, oh my gosh, the wind is throwing us around like we weigh nothing. And it was one of the scariest rides of my entire life. And one of the things that I realized while I was up there, thousands of feet in the air, being thrown around and tossed around in the middle of this storm, one of the things I realized is this, that we are really small and that we really aren't in control like we think we are. 
You know when you're flying in a plane and you're like, okay, I got this. And then all of a sudden, something bigger comes and just changes everything. And, and, and I realize that, man, we're not really in control. And I want to just say, I think that's how many of us feel right now. Many of us, like we never expected, and we like we flew into this big, huge storm, this pandemic that has disrupted life. It has changed everything about life, and it has got so many of us worried because it's turbulent. And the reality is, we're not in control. And that's one of the scariest places for us to be. And I don't know if some of you, when it comes to maybe your faith, that, that you feel like it's been shaken. When you realize your entire life has maybe been shaken and, and you find yourself in this place where, where if you have ever gone through a hardship, if you've ever gone through a storm, and I'm not talking about the physical one that I went through on an airplane, I'm talking about metaphorically speaking in life. If you've gone through some pain, if you've experienced some hardship, you know what it's like to be shaken. And so that's why I was inspired and I felt inspired to do this series called Unshaken, because I, I believe that as we walk through this series together, my hope and my prayer is, is that we are living in a time where everything feels like it's shaking. What does it look like for you and me to live lives that are unshaken in the midst of the greatest turbulence? What does it look like for, for God to give us the sure foundation that no matter what we go through, that our faith is not shaken. The inspiration for the series actually are some words that Jesus said once. Jesus, in fact, I believe he may have said this many times. One of, one of the most famous messages that Jesus gave, and I believe it wasn't just like a one-time thing, but I believe everywhere he traveled, Jesus's primary message was what you can read in the gospel of Matthew from Matthew 5 to 7. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. There was a time when he was up on a mountain and there was th crowds of people that gathered around to hear him. And Matthew, guy who was named Levi at one point, but Matthew who followed Jesus recorded the words that Jesus spoke. Some of the most beautiful words you could ever imagine about life. And it's at the end of the message. You always know, you know, the keys are going. It's one of those moments. That's when you're going to land the plane. At the end of the message, Jesus drops this truth bomb that is so real and it is so relevant to our lives right now. I, I, I've got to share it with you. Matthew chapter 7. Let me, let me read this to you. Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. Here's what it says. Jesus said these words, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall. Here's what he says, check this out, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came and the streams rose and the wind blew and beat against that house. And he said this, it fell with a great crash. Jesus paints this picture, if you would follow along. He paints a picture of two men building houses. These two guys are both building these beautiful houses, houses that maybe you and I, like we would build and live in. I want you to picture just the, these houses. Both of them look very similar. Both of them are just, they're these incredible houses. He, he, they, they've got four bedrooms, three bathrooms, stucco or brick finish. They've got three car garage, the most beautiful kitchen, stainless appliances. He's like, two guys are building these incredible houses, houses that surely would end up in the parade of homes. And they look identical above the surface. They both look, they're, they're incredible. They're amazing. We all would want to live in a house like this. Jesus says they're building these houses and they look the same above the surface, but they're not the same beneath the surface. They, they look, they look similar. They look beautiful, but it's what's under them. Jesus said that really matters. The, the foundation for which they're built upon. Let me, let me see if I can maybe paint a, a description or a picture for you like this. Uh, the truth is this. You and I, we are all building something with our lives. We're building something. 
I want you to recognize every day, every minute, every hour, every moment of your life, you are building something out of it. We're all building houses. And, and it kind of made me think of, of, of this game that I don't know if you've played. I've played this before. There's a game that we maybe have all played called uh, Jenga. You ever played Jenga? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about how we all build our lives, but we all start with a foundation. All of us do. And when you start off the game of Jenga to stack blocks, you know, and you start off in life and you're building your life. Can I tell you that you are going to build some things, but it's going to start with a foundation. And the truth is this. We all have a foundation. All of us do. We all have something that our lives have been built upon. And so for many of us, what, what our lives were built upon has so much to do with how we grew up. It, it, what I'm saying is this, the, the structure of your, your beliefs, your values, your ethics, your morals, they were given to you some way, somehow. Uh, it could be things that your parents taught you. Did your parents teach you some things when you were younger? Maybe they taught you to always be nice. Huh? Maybe they taught you to be polite, and so you became polite. So that's, that's it. these are building blocks, foundation for, for your life. Or, and, then, and then maybe it's things your grandparents told you. Maybe your grandparents would teach you things. You'd go hang out at your grandparents' house, and they, they would teach you about life. Maybe it's things that you learned from your friends. You know, we learn things from our friends, whether good, whether bad. We're always, you know, these are things that, that become foundational to what we believe about life. And, and that just continues. Maybe like, like me, some of you, you, uh, you, you went to church when you grew up. Maybe your mom, your dad, maybe your grandparents. I know some of you maybe didn't, but that's all part of your foundation. And, and my, my parents, they did. They took me to church. And so I began to learn things in church. I, I began to learn some real foundational things about God that began to shape what I believe about God. And I, I don't know if any of you kind of had a, a start to your foundation uh, when it comes to faith. I don't know if any of you had, had some things that you were taught, maybe when you were younger, about who God is. I was taught that God is loving. That's, that's a block. That's, that's some blocks. I taught that God is loving, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. I, I learned that at a young age. I, I learned that uh, God is merciful. Can I say how thankful I am that God is merciful? I, I learned that, that God is merciful and that he doesn't want to wipe you out when you mess up, that, that God wants to lovingly, he wants to lead you in his mercy. And, and I've learned these things. I learned that uh, God is gracious. Oh my gosh, I need his grace. I really need his grace in my life. I, I learned that God answers prayers. I, I learned that God hears from heaven when we pray. I, I learned that God not only hears, but God, he'll answer those prayers when we pray them. And, and I just, I learned all these things. I learned that God is good. We have a good, I learned that, that God will, this, I learned that God will never leave us He'll never forsake us. And so we, we begin to build our lives. We build our structures. We build the, you know, our, our beliefs and everything that start on some of these real foundational things. That's, that's what we do. In fact, let me give you this, this one truth that I, I want you to just maybe write this down. You're throw it in the comments or whatever. Uh, but this, we build what we build our life upon will determine the kind of life we can build. Let me say it again. What we build our life upon can and will determine the kind of life that we can build. The foundation that we build our life on. And so I don't know for you, maybe you didn't go to church. And maybe it was just all about, hey, you need to do what you need to do for you. Maybe it's just do whatever your heart tells you to do. You follow your heart. You just, you know, I don't know. But, but whatever we build our life upon will determine the kind of life that we can build. And so we, we build and we keep building our houses and, and they, they getting bigger. And this is great when life gets bigger. We, we're building our, our houses and we get, listen, and then all of a sudden we get older and we, we start getting a real significant career and we get significant income and we just keep building. I got to get a bigger house. I'm going to build even bigger. And that's great. But let me tell you something that we all understand about life. And that is this, that none of us are building in a vacuum. None of us are building 
in a lab. In other words, what I'm saying is reality of life. It's great to be able to build this, but the reality of life is that we'll keep building until hardships come. We build our life and then, look, can I just tell you, hardships do come. The, the reality is, is that we're not building in a, in a lab. We're building in the human experience where there's pain, disappointment, where there's struggle, where there's loss of jobs, loss of life, where we are living and we're experiencing. That's the shaking that comes. And the question that Jesus would, would pose to all of us is what are you building it upon? What's underneath? The foundation matters. I learned how important the foundation of your house is when my wife and I, we bought our first house. We bought this nice, cute little house in Pickerington and... Um, and it was perfect, perfect little size house for the two of us. We were young, we we're in our 20s, early 20s, and we built this house, and, or I mean, we bought this house in Pickerington. It was a little older, but it was cute, it was updated, and it was great. And, and, and we bought this house the first couple of years. Everything was wonderful, it was great. And then I remember one winter, it was a really bad winter, it was real cold temperatures, harsh, bitter, frozen tundra. I mean, it was really bad. I remember going downstairs into the basement of this house and something caught my attention. I'm looking at these basement walls and I'm like, something doesn't look right. As I look at these basement walls, what I noticed was a massive crack all the way across the middle of one of the basement walls. And not only was there a crack, but I began to see a gap as the block in the walls began, it began to move inward and was splitting and coming open. And I'm just telling you, I started to freak out. I'm thinking, is this safe? Is the basement walls going to cave? Is the house going to come down? Like I was scared to death. And, and, and so as that winter came, the, the walls began to split and move and bow into that. I mean, it was the scariest looking thing ever. You were like, oh my gosh, at any time this is going to collapse. And so then I called an expert because I didn't know what to do called somebody in, an expert, and they took a look. You know what they discovered? Here's what they found. They said that the, around the foundation, the footer, that the drains weren't working properly and that water had backed up along the house. And then here's what they said. When the harsh winter came, when the hard freeze came, it caused that water to turn to ice and expand and it just pushed against the foundational walls. It pushed against the basement walls, the block walls, and they began to bow and push into the house. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? He's like, it's okay. I think it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. We ended up getting it, uh, we ended up uh, eventually getting it restabilized. But what was interesting because I didn't get it restabilized right away. I was like, oh, so it's not going to fall? Like, no, it's not going to fall. I'm like, okay, I can live with a little crack. Crack got really big. I just stick your whole hand in there. I mean, this is how scary it was. And then spring and summer came, and it got warm, and it got beautiful out. Just like we're dying for our beautiful summer weather. And so, you know, the sun came out, and it, got, it dried up. And the moment that happened, guess what happened? The basement wall went back into its place. And you couldn't even see there was a crack there. And I thought to myself, It's fixed. Until the next winter, harsh weather came, and guess what? It started to bow back in, and I had to actually have it repaired and fixed. And you know what I realized? This, this is what I understand. Life can be great when you build with all these blocks. And life's great until hard winter comes, until bitter climate happens, until you deal with something hard and the moment you deal with something hard, all of a sudden it disrupts or it exposes what is really in the foundation. And so many of us, many of you have walked through situations that have caused the foundation maybe of your faith and your life to be a little bit scary. Maybe to cause it, maybe some of you, you know, you had those real foundational things about life and what you believed here. And then all of a sudden, one day you get a call from your boss and you find out that, that, that you're getting laid off. And one of the blocks that you trusted in, my career, my job, this I can provide for myself, it just it came out. And, and then maybe, you know, your, your marriage, everything you thought was great, but then all of a sudden, your spouse cheated on you. And what you always believed about trust and about life, and it just... It's starting to fall apart, your foundation. Maybe you're, you walk through your parents getting a divorce and went through the hardship. Oh my gosh, be careful. 
and you walked through something like that when you were younger, and you started to really question things, you started to question God. Maybe even in your own life, you know, there was a moment where you were praying for something to happen, and it didn't happen. And that was that block of trusting and thinking that God was out there just started to disappear. And think about all the moments that, that we go through. You got hurt by somebody. You got hurt real bad. And all of a sudden, you, you, you have a hard time being able to trust again. And you lost another block. Or maybe there was a, a, a time where you, you really believed that God was there. But then when you needed him most, it seemed like he never answered and all of a sudden, what was once a foundational block of faith started to look a little bit more like doubt. Or maybe you, you walked through a really tough situation and it was filled with disappointment. And you didn't know that you could ever believe that God is good again. And so what happens is, and all of us have maybe experienced moments like this, is that the foundation that we've built upon starts to get a little bit unsettled. And the moment something comes into our life like that, little bits and pieces of what we thought we knew and believed and trusted just kind of got ripped out from under us. Now, some of you are watching this right now. The truth is that the foundation of your life and what you believe probably looks a little bit more like this than when it started. That all these different experiences that we go through where all of a sudden I thought, I thought this is the way God was. It just got changed, and it starts to look a little scary. Now, here's what we do. Our life goes on, and we just have to keep moving. We just keep going through life. That's what we do. And many of you, you, you know, you just you kept going. You kept moving through life, and, and so what did you do? You just, I just got to keep going, and we do. We got to keep going. And so what do we do? We, we say, okay, well, I, I got to keep working, and so I'm going to go to work. And we say, I I, I I don't know that I believe that God is there anymore, but I, but I still have to, I still got to live life, and I still need a job. And so you, you continue to stack blocks as we build. This is what we do with our lives. We're constantly building. I need to get a better lifestyle, so I'm going to work a little bit harder, and I'm going to, and this is what we're doing. And so we live in this situation where we're all going through moments that are causing the foundation of our life to be exposed. That's what hardship does. That's what storms do. They expose what's really underneath that we can't see. And we're continuing to build life. And that works. That's great. We, we'll just build and keep building, keep building up until all of a sudden a major storm comes. Maybe like a, I don't know, a pandemic that completely disrupts all of life that completely just takes everything you thought you could trust and hold on to, and it just shakes it. And all of a sudden, this big, massive block just starts to come. And then all... <laughs> and all of a sudden, Jesus said that the winds blew, the streams rose, the storm came, and the house that was built upon sand, didn't make it. And if I could just look right into the camera and to every person who's watching this right now. You see, the truth is that many of us maybe have had a faith and we were exposed to Jesus or we were exposed to thoughts of God when we were at a young age. Maybe you went to church or Sunday school or your grandparents take, took you to school and you had all of that, but then... Maybe what you're discovering right now is that your faith is maybe a little bit more like a house of cards. You know, like where you build a, a house out of cards. All it takes is someone to, to blow. All it takes is one storm. All it takes is one card comes out of there. That you had a professor who said to you one time that the Bible is inaccurate. And everything you thought you would just fell right out from under you. All the disappointment of life and what you thought God would do and who you thought he would, one little car, and it all just came tumbling down. My question to all of us today is this. So what is holding you up? 
What's holding your house up? What is holding up the foundation of your house? Because I think Jesus' words were so perfect. They were what we need to hear right now today. And there are two things that Jesus said that I want us to see. Two things with the rest of our time that I, I want to just unpack quickly that Jesus said is the key to building a house that can still stand in the midst of every kind of storm and hardship and pain and struggle. Here's what he said. The first one is this. Here's what Jesus said. He said, we need to hear Jesus's words. We have to hear his words. Jesus was one of the most incredible, most amazing teachers of his day. Jesus, even I would put that today, the words that Jesus spoke are some of the things that have become, by the way, the building blocks for all of society. Some of the things that Jesus taught was with a level of wisdom that came from, it was outside this world. It was from heaven. Why? Because he is the creator. And because Jesus knows life and he knows you and me and he knows what we need best. And so, listen, the most important thing Jesus said after the sermon, he said, he says, therefore, everyone who hears my words. Can I tell you that one of the things that I strive to do always is not preach my words, but his words. To not give you my opinions, but Jesus's words. To listen, and I, I found this, that sometimes we like what Jesus and his word says. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I read stuff that Jesus said. I read stuff that's in God's word, and I like what he said. We love today, even in our culture, there's people that don't believe in Jesus that go, I like some of the things he said. Jesus said things like this, don't judge lest you be judged. We love that. We throw that around. Don't judge me. Jesus said things. Jesus said this. Jesus said, love your neighbor. That's popular. That's big. I mean, we're all about love right now. These are things that Jesus taught. Jesus said, taught us that God is merciful. He taught us that God loves us like a father, not like some deity who's sitting up there ready to strike us every time we screw up and mess up. Jesus taught us these things about the father. Jesus taught us some of the most amazing things about life. Jesus said there is life after this. Jesus taught us, that, and you know what? We love to hear those words. We love to hear those things. But as much as I love these things that I talk about that Jesus said, can I tell you this? Jesus also said some things that I don't like that much. Jesus also said some words that a lot of us don't want to hear. Do you know that? Jesus said things like, uh, I don't know, he talked about there's heaven, but he also talked about there's hell. Jesus said this. He didn't just say, love your neighbor. Jesus also said, love your enemy. I don't, wait, wait, wait. That person who wronged me, I'm supposed to love them? Yeah, Jesus said, love them. Jesus said, if someone offends you, if someone hurts you, if someone slaps you, give them the other cheek. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't like that version of Jesus. Jesus said, I mean, he said this. He said, it is harder for a rich man to enter heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. And some of you are thinking, whoo, thank goodness I'm not rich. Can I tell you, most of my audience are watching me right now here in America, you are, well, you are better off and richer than about 99% of the rest of the world. You and I, we are rich. Jesus said these things. Jesus was so direct in some of the things he said. And you know what I have found? Here's what I found, that many Christ followers, even this, that we don't like certain things that Jesus said. And so here's what we do. We hop from church to church to church because I don't like what they're preaching because I don't like what they're saying. Now, listen, if they're not preaching Jesus and his words, then you should. But if they are preaching his words, even the ones you don't like to hear, can I just tell you the worst thing you can do is go find some other place that will just tell you what you do want to hear. Because sometimes the most loving thing that anyone can do for you is not tell you what you want to hear, but tell you what you need to hear. Are you hearing Jesus's words? Because here's what I found. A lot of us, when we hear his words, that's the moment where we turn and stop. We walk away. In fact, it wasn't just true today. It was true in Jesus's time. In John chapter 6, matter of fact, there, there's a situation, this moment. This is a perfect illustration of this. In John chapter 6, Jesus had just finished feeding 5,000 men plus women and children. Some say ten or 15,000 people with a few loaves and fish. 
The very next day, all the people flock back to Jesus. Why? Because they were hungry again. And they show up and Jesus kind of like, you're just trying to use me. Like, like he, he can pick up on the fact that you're, and, he, and he, so he used that moment to kind of say, hey, stop chasing after your next bite. Stop chasing your appetite and start chasing something that will give you life forever. And he switches there. While he talks about bread. He says, you need bread from heaven. And then Jesus said, I am the bread that has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats of this bread will never go hungry. And they're like, what? Oh, and I think Jesus knew. And so he just kind of digs the knife in a little bit further. And he said something that, that they didn't quite get. It, it kind of sounded like cannibalism, but Jesus was speaking metaphorically and they just totally missed it. He said this, he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, that you will not be an eternal life with God. Like, and they heard that and they're like, oh, oh, this is awful. I don't want anything to do with this. Now, he was not talking about actual flesh. He was actually talking about his death that was coming. He was talking about how he was gonna be the one-time sacrifice to pave the way for faith through him to get to the Father in heaven. And so they couldn't get it. And here's what John 6 tells us. There's this verse, let me read it to you. John 6, verse 66. The scariest verse in the entire Bible. John 6, 6, 6. Here's what it says. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. All these people are like, oh, we love you, Jesus. The moment he said something that they didn't like, the moment he said something that was a little harsh, they didn't quite get, they, they turned and didn't follow. And so Jesus, as all the crowds start leaving him, he turns to the, the 12 he picked. He turns to the disciples that were the closest to him. And he looked at him, he said this, let me read verse 67. He said, you do not want to leave too, do you? You wanna follow them? You wanna bail? Do you wanna go? That's what he said. Jesus asked the 12, and Simon Peter, I love Peter, he answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of what? Everybody say that with me. You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. I love this. There, there was no way they could get rid of them. Jesus could not get rid of them because they recognized that he has the words of life. Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears my words. What Jesus came to say are just, not just nice words. He wasn't just a great teacher, but he was the son of God who stepped out of heaven and he came to show us and tell us the best way to live, the way God intended it. And if I could just say, as, as maybe your pastor, that sometimes, and I understand this, that the most loving thing that I can do is not just teach you the words of Jesus that we like, but for me to teach you everything that he said. For me to even, even where it kind of hurts a little bit and convicts, because listen, this is what will build a foundation under your life that will not crumble when a storm comes. And so my question to you today is this, are you in the proximity to hear the words of Jesus? Are you close enough to hear? Can I just say, if you're watching this right now, that you're tuning it, that you are actually leaning in to hear what Jesus said. I wanna invite you and encourage you to keep doing that. But I wanna encourage you, could you do that even on your own? You can always read the words of God right here. That It is life for us. And here's what I've discovered, that there are some, and maybe some who are watching this today, that you did not ever want to go to a church. Maybe you felt like if I stepped into a church, something bad would happen because of the shame and the guilt. Maybe you thought, I, I don't want to go there because I don't want to hear it. But with everything that's going on, you decided in the safety of your own home that you could, t you could tune into something like this. Could I just encourage you and say, I, I know sometimes he said things that we don't want to hear, but this is about the foundation of your life. Are you in proximity? Are you close enough to hear? Don't run away when you hear something that, is, that challenges you. Recognize that it's God trying to preserve you. The first thing he said, everyone who hears, but the second one is this. He said, we have to put into practice Jesus' words. He said, everyone who not just hears my words, but puts my words into practice is like the man or woman who builds their house, who builds their life upon a rock. That when the storms come, are you putting into practice what Jesus says? That's my question. 
Are we doing that? Because a lot of us, we, we, we say, I'm follow Jesus. A lot of us say, I'm a Christ follower. I'm a Christian. And we think it's like checking some box. Like, okay, well, here's my belief structure. Here's my faith. Or I grew up with this. Can I just be real honest with you and tell you that following Jesus means that we not only hear what he says, but we also do it. Following Jesus. I think so many of us go, I'm a Jesus follower. That doesn't mean you just believe in him. It means you hear what he says and you do it. You implement it into your life. And here's the thing. I believe that there are many, many Christ followers today who claim that. And, and we come to church when we were able to come to church and we sit in church all the time and we're there and maybe you hear it, but we don't often put it into practice. We can just leave without actually doing anything at all. Can I tell you that when we do that, that you're not fooling anybody else. You're not fooling God. God knows everything about us. The only person that we fool is ourselves. The only one we'll deceive is ourselves. That's what James, the half-brother of Jesus, said. James, the half-brother of Jesus, who did not believe that Jesus, his half-brother, was the Son of God until he came back from the dead. And then James became a follower of Jesus, and James said the most beautiful words in verses 22 and 24 of James 1. He said, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Here's what he said. Everybody say that last little phrase with me. He said, do what it says. Don't, don't, you're deceiving yourself. Do what it says. He said, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after a long, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. In other words, here's what Jesus is trying to say to us. If you want to build your life on something solid and something sure, regardless of what comes, he says, you gotta not only hear what I'm saying about life, but you gotta put it into practice. You gotta do something with it. And I think if I could just kind of get real with so many of you, maybe you've been in church for maybe all your life. I think that we've, we've sometimes gotten so comfortable that we can hear the words of Jesus and, and we, can, we can hear them and they can maybe even touch us. And then we can leave church or we can turn this recording off and never do anything about it. And the only person that we're deceiving is ourselves. And we're building something, but maybe we're building something that's, that's not so sure. It, it would be like going to a financial planner and the financial planner looks at you and says, okay, if you want to retire at age 60, here's what you need. You need to save this you need to put your money in this. You need to do that. And you say, that's awesome. I want to retire at 60. I want to travel the world. I want to do all the things I never could do. I want to get a boat down in Florida. I want to do all these things. Okay, well, here's what you got to do. And then it would be like walking out of the financial planner's office and never doing anything that he said. You didn't save a dime. You didn't do any of that. And then here's what happened. You're going to turn 60 one day. You're going to call up your financial planner. Hey, how am I doing? And the financial planner is going to take a look at your account and say, not very well. Why didn't you do anything that I said to do? Well, I, I just, and, 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 and we, we're going through life. And so many of us, we hear the words of Jesus, if I could say, but then we don't act on it. We don't do it. And one day what's going to happen is we're going to get to a point in life. Where we're going to look back and this is what I don't want. And I know you don't want this. And we're going to be filled with regret because we didn't do the very thing that he had said to do at that moment. Can I just tell you, you can't ignore what Jesus said and expect to be blessed. You can't ignore what he said about our finances and how to operate them and still expect God to bless them. You can't ignore what God says about relationships and still expect God's hand on that. You can't ignore what Jesus said about real joy and then wonder why you don't have it because you didn't do the things that he said to do. You gotta take a step. You gotta move in the direction of Jesus' words. That's my prayer. That's, my, that's what I'm asking you today. Are you putting into practice the things you don't even want to hear that Jesus said? And if I could just tell you as a pastor what breaks my heart, maybe more than anything else, is the thought that I, as a church and as a pastor, my heart for you is that you would get a solid foundation for your life. That's my heart. And, and what we do and what I do as a leader is I just try to point the direction. I say, here's how you follow Jesus. 
And we as a church, we provide so many different ways. Can I just tell you that we do? We, what breaks my heart is that we provide the path. We provide the steps for so many people and yet hundreds and hundreds are in our church. They never take them. We, we created a growth track called X University to help people get a foundation of faith in their lives. And I cannot tell you, I, I, we've had tons go through, but hundreds and hundreds of people in our church that think, I don't need it. I've been in church. I've been at this church for a while. No, you don't understand. This is, this is not about, we don't need this. We create this for you so that you can know his words and put them into practice in your life so that when storms come, you don't freak out. Anxiety doesn't rise up and fear doesn't take over your life because there's a solid foundation. And so we provide that. We provide an experience called Explore where if you have questions about faith, jump into a small group atmosphere and discover what that is. We provide circles or small groups so you can grow in your faith. We provide all of these these things and what breaks my heart so many people we think like, I don't need that I'm good on my own listen we all need to take a step toward what Jesus said by putting into practice his words otherwise we're like a man who built a house upon sand storms will come pain comes hardship comes we're living proof that we're in that right now. But here's what I want to be able to say for all of us. I want you to be able I want for everybody that's listening to this right now, I want for us that no matter how turbulent it gets, that we have a foundation that we can say, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I want to be like this one little yellow house in Gilchrist, Texas, that when a hurricane came in 2008, Hurricane Ike, and the storm surge just wiped out the coast. House after house destroyed. I'll show you this picture. Look at, look at this house. There's this one little yellow house in the midst of all this devastation. One little house by itself that is still standing. Every other house got wiped out, but this one house, why? Because there was something about this house that it had its foundation on bedrock. Its foundation was on a rock. Can I tell you today, the one thing that will enable you to keep standing through this season and through every trial that you come is when your foundation is Jesus Christ, the solid rock by which I stand. When your life is put upon him, his words, when you put it into action, when, you're, when your faith lines up with your heart and your actions, that's when you can say, no matter what comes, I'm still standing. And I pray if you'll continue with me through this series, Unshaken, that we're going to learn together, it's not too late, how to develop a foundation on the rock so that we can still stand through every storm. Come on, would you just take a moment, wherever you are, would you just pray with me? This is a moment where you just turn your mind, your heart to God. I know it might be crazy and chaotic at home, but if maybe you could just quiet the atmosphere. Would you just close your eyes for a moment? Would you think about what Jesus said with me? Jesus, you said that we need to hear your words and we need to put them into practice. God, here's what I know for every person that's watching this right now, myself included, that God, I, I want my life, what I'm building, to be built on the rock. I wanna build it on something firm that no matter what storms come, that God, my faith is not shaken that my hope in you is not shaken. My peace is not shaken. My joy is not shaken because it rests in something solid. And so God, I pray right now for everyone who is filled with fear and anxiety, that God, right now, you're using this moment to expose maybe cracks in our foundation, cracks in our faith, cracks in what we thought we believed so that we could, so that we could have the ultimate builder come and fix it. God, I believe that you can fix foundations. I believe that, God, you can give us sure foundations, sure footings right now. And so, God, I pray for every person that, God, they would in this moment, as they think about the words that you speak, and as we hear them, God, we would put them into action in our lives. Listen, as we're praying, I just wonder, some of you, you're watching this, and the truth is that you don't have that foundation of faith. Maybe you never went to church. Maybe no one ever told you. It's okay, I'm telling you right now. And here's the good news. You can get a foundation that is so sure starting today. 
that God wants to give you a foundation. And here's how that, how that foundation comes, how the footers get poured. They get poured when you recognize who Jesus was and when you surrender your life to him, when you say, Jesus, will you be the foundation of my life? And I wonder if there's some of you watching right now that it's time that you need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to say, I want you to be the foundation for my life. And so in this moment, I wanna surrender my life over to him. Because many of us, we built something out of our lives, but it was not founded upon Jesus. And let me tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna learn in the days and weeks, months and years to come, the words of Jesus as you dive in, as you keep coming back, as you get into an online circle, as you, as you take XU, as you do these things, you're gonna learn what he said. And here's the key, you're gonna just step by step, you're gonna put them into practice. And God's gonna build a foundation under you, but it starts with your faith in Jesus, that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If that is you today, I wanna lead you in a prayer. If you're watching this right now on our, our website, our church website, our live site, would you just click the banner below? Or if you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, or even on that site, here's what I love for you. If that is your decision today, would you just type the word life and put it in the comments? Just put life in the comments. That's way, your way of responding. Even though we're remote right now, that's your way of responding to God and say, life, I receive the life that you have for me. I receive new life today in Jesus Christ. You just type that in those comments, life. Just put that in there if that's your prayer. If you're saying, I'm receiving Jesus as my Lord and say, my foundation, you just type life in there. We want to be able to join with you and support you. And if that is your prayer today, would you just pray a prayer like this with me, wherever you are. You say, Father, today I receive your son, Jesus. I receive Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I know he died for me. And he rose again. So today, right now, in this moment, I give my life over to him. God, would you forgive me of building my life the way I've built it on my own? But right now, I'm asking you to create a foundation. A foundation. I have faith right now to put my hope and my trust in you alone. And so, Jesus, I'm inviting you to be the Lord of my life from this day forward. And we pray all these things together in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen.